We got our brake pressure warning light on, as well as the brake system warning. Hooked up to the unit and we're getting the ABS code C109E for the vacuum sensor circuit. So we're gonna go ahead and test that vacuum sensor, show you where it's located here. That's a sensor right there in the brake booster. Push this tab in and remove it. Okay, I had to use two hands to remove it. The tab was on there pretty tight. And um, so you want to test for your 5 volt reference. There's going to be a ground, a 5 volt, and a signal going back to the module. So to test the signal, the, uh, we'd have to do a resistance test from the module circuit to the connector. But for our 5 volt reference and ground, it's uh, a lot easier. We could test it right at the connector here and see if we get our 5 volts. For testing our 5 volt reference and ground, I have my ground terminal hooked up to the middle of the connector and the power side hooked up to the left of the connector and this is going to be for your 5 volt reference and ground and you should get 5 volts. Now you see we're getting 2.95 which is definitely out of spec so we have a wiring issue. If it was in spec then I would do a resistance check between our sensor wire to the module and if that's good then we have a bad sensor but with this we definitely could tell we have a bad ground or a 5 volt reference circuit. The next step would be to wiggle the harness to see if we get fluctuations on our meter. That way there we can see if we have an intermittent pro wiring problem or a bad ABS ECU if there's no fluctuations. So just kind of wiggle wherever this harness routes, wherever you could reach. Uh, there's the ABS module down there. Um, let me turn the light on here. There we go. Just kind of shake that while watching our meter. And as you can see, our meter is actually moving a lot. So we know we have probably a rub through wire or corroded circuit right down in here. Because when I move that section of the harness, our meter is going like crazy. So that's where the, the problem is. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheel remove the inner fender and we'll find where that problem is. Just pulling the connectors off the friend, inner fender. Not sure the exact size on these, but I'm using a 730 seconds to pull them off. out but you'll be able to finagle it and, and pull it out of there. Well I opted for this route just kind of peeled it over and just holding it on the jack stand with the bungee cord and there's a harness right there. So I'm going to bring my meter down here wiggle sections of this harness and uh, see where it moves most and then that's where I'm going to open it up. The sensor connector in through the wheel well just to make it easier. Got my meter hooked up and now this harness just kind of wiggle it so I see where it moves the most which wiggling it up here doesn't seem to be doing much but right down here as you can see it's moving a lot like right over right around here so I'm gonna open this open this up and we'll see what we can find oh well, we found our issue disconnect to the module open the harness up and as you can see there's our corroded wire. So we'll fix it up, recheck our voltage, and uh, should be all good after that. Put it back together. 
Okay, got our wiring all fixed up here. Plugged it back in. Rechecked our 5 volt reference and we are getting 5 volts at the sensor. So that's all good to go. Just put everything back together and clear the codes and go on a road test.